anointing, Jesus Christ, Prison Ministry, for another video Bible study. Our topic, a living relationship with Christ. We hear much in our churches today about how important it is to have a relationship with God. We spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in buying books, going to meetings and special seminars, trying to find out how to have this special relationship with God. We are told, don't worry about the law or the commandments. Just come to church and get a relationship with Jesus. But in the end, we feel let down. We go to our churches, listen to our pastors, and belong to our denominations. But we know we are lacking that special relationship with God. Therefore, we put on a show of having that special relationship. Heaven forbid we should be the only ones without it. So we claim we have it. We make sure we say the right words eat the right foods, do the right things, everything we can in order to convince others and ourselves that we have it. But we don't. Therefore, I would like to share with you the biblical concept of what it means and how to get a relationship with Jesus. A dictionary definition of the word relationship has the following meaning. One. The way in which two or more concepts, objects, or people are connected, or the state of being connected. 2. The way in which two or more people or organizations regard and behave toward each other. Here, you see a blackbird and I being connected by its claws. We have a connection. And in a sense, we have a relationship. However, I know nothing of the blackbird, where it came from, what it likes, doesn't like, or why it is on my arm. All I know is that one day while out walking, it just decided to come down and be with me for a little while, and then flew away. Did we have a relationship? Yes but it was almost meaningless. It brightened my day, but the connection was physical and we did not really connect on a meaningful basis. Now here is an animal I am truly connected to. He was homeless and wandering down the highway when I took him in when he was about the age of six months. He is a pink-nosed pit bull. I had never owned a pit before. All I had ever heard was that they were mean and deadly. Oh, our relationship is totally opposite to what I had imagined. Rebel is the sweetest, kindest, most thoughtful, gentle, and sensitive dog I have ever owned. Better than most humans I have known. I have truly developed a relationship with him. I call him son. He loves to play with me, work with me, study with me, have worship with me, eat with me, shower with me, sleep with me, swim with me, and climb trees. But all of this is not about him. I have never seen a dog so unselfish. All of this is his desire to please me and be obedient. This relationship is so close that I hate leaving the property without him. Every chance I get, I take him with me. And just think, not once did Rebel read a book or listen to a sermon on how to have a relationship with me. But our relationship is closer than I have had with any human in my life. On the other hand, I have another dog that I love very much. But his relationship with me is a very different relationship. He is only with me when he can get what he wants. If there is nothing he wants, 
I don't see him. He just lies in his doghouse, all cozy and nice, doing what is good for him. Not much of a relationship going on between Foster and I. What makes the relationship different between the blackbird, Foster, the pit, and me? Let us take a journey through the Bible and see if we can discern what makes the difference between a casual connection and a living relationship. The first point we need to recognize is that nowhere in the King James authorized version of the Bible will you find the word relationship. After searching many versions of the Bible, the only version of the Bible I was able to find the word relationship was the ISV, International Standard Version. And in that version, it was only mentioned twice. Both times had to do with human sexual relationships. This brings up an interesting fact. While the churches keep talking about having a relationship with God, nowhere in the Bible do we find God asking us to have a relationship with Him. The same concept goes with saved by grace. The churches are always talking about it, but nowhere in the Bible do you find it. I am beginning to wonder where these churches are getting their information. Obviously, it is not from God or His Word. Lucifer and Jesus Christ had a relationship. Lucifer was the covering cherub. He stood in the presence of Christ and relayed the instructions of Jesus to the rest of the angels. You were an anointed guardian cherub. I placed you. You were on the holy mountain of God. In the midst of the stones of fire, you walked. Ezekiel 28, 14. Can you get a closer relationship? What a wonderful relationship they had. They were truly connected in their work and emotions. But if a physical and emotional connection were important for a relationship and eternal life, Lucifer would be doing just fine right now. But that connection and relationship was unable to keep Lucifer from rebelling against God. You might say he was in church 24-7 in the presence of God, and yet it did him no good. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till unrighteousness was found in you. Ezekiel 28, 15. Adam and Eve had a relationship with Jesus Christ. He would come to walk and talk with them in the cool of the evening. Genesis 3, 8. Wow, how much closer could a human get in a relationship with Christ? But did that relationship benefit them? No. They lost their eternal life and their home. And why? Because they sinned against God and rebelled against His command. As long as they were in obedience to God, they had a relationship with Him. But when they sinned, Adam said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Genesis 3, 9. In other words, it appears that in order to have a saving relationship with God, it must be founded on obedience. Could it be that sin or disobedience produces a naked feeling in the presence of God by which we want to hide ourselves from God? Do you ever feel that way? God said to Cain, If you do well, Will you not be accepted? Genesis 4, 7. After Cain killed his brother, the Bible tells us that he went away from the presence of the Lord. Genesis 4, 16. It seems that sin takes us away from the presence of the Lord. 
while obedience brings us into a relationship with God. Could it be that the relationship we want with God is not one we need to search for, but that as soon as we live in obedience to God, our relationship begins automatically. It seems that when we disobey God, we become afraid feel naked and hide ourselves from God. In other words, we are the ones who cut the relationship, not God. Like the prodigal son, it is us who left God and not the other way around. I am not sure if Noah had a relationship with God. But Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him, Genesis 7, 5. Definitely his obedience to God saved his life. While all the other people of the earth were claiming to have a relationship with God, only Noah and his family were saved. Abraham definitely had a relationship with God. In order to develop that special relationship, God asked Abraham to go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, Genesis 12, 1. It was in leaving everything behind that Abraham could find the peace and quiet to talk to God face to face as with a friend. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be Blameless, Genesis 17, 1. I think God is on to something here. In order to have the relationship we want, we must walk before God and be blameless. As Jesus said, be perfect, stop sinning, and keep the Ten Commandments to get your eternal life. Moses had a very special relationship with God. In order for God to use Moses and bring him into that special relationship, God had to move Moses into a wilderness experience. Moses had to be separated from the world in order to learn how to hear God speaking to him. We need to do the same. God didn't tell Moses to go to church. He told him to move into the desert away from people and external influences. We need to find the desert experience in our own lives. Take time to be alone with God. Be still and know that I am God. Psalms 46, 10. Once Moses learned how to get that special relationship with God through obedience to him, God was able to use him in one of the greatest evangelical movements the world has ever experienced. We can go through the Bible, taking example after example to show those who developed relationships with God. Each and every one of them developed that relationship through obedience to God. When they disobeyed, they lost that relationship and had to turn themselves around and find it again through obedience. Eli, he was high priest but did not have a relationship with God because he was not obedient to God in the raising and disciplining of his sons. He lived and worked at the church, but was lost eternally. Samuel, on the other hand, remained faithful to God, obeying every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Once he reached the age of about 18, he didn't spend much time in church, he was very busy making house calls, bringing people into an obedient relationship with God. King Saul started out with a relationship with God. God changed his heart and prophesied through him, 1 Samuel 10.10. 10. But when King Saul lifted up his heart and refused to be obedient to God, he lost the relationship and his eternal life. David, on the other hand, as long as he was obedient to God, had a very special relationship with him. 
He made mistakes, but he repented of them and continued his relationship with God through continued obedience. The nation of Israel had a very special relationship with God. He called them out of bondage and made them into a great nation. As long as they were obedient to him, that relationship continued. But when they stopped being obedient, the relationship stopped. The nation was destroyed and they were taken into captivity and killed. The same with us. From Genesis to Revelation, as we have already seen, nowhere does God get all gooey and emotional about getting a relationship with him. He is straightforward. Obey and live, disobey and die. Obey, and we will have a wonderful relationship with God. Disobey, and he cannot dwell with you. 2 Corinthians 6.14 Church going only confuses people. It gives you a sense of relationship with God, but in reality, it is interposing itself between you and God. The relationship you have is a feel-good, pagan, Catholic relationship with your church. The disciples' experience with Jesus is very interesting when you study this subject. The disciples listened to Jesus, followed Jesus, slept with Jesus, ate with Jesus, bathed with Jesus, but not one had a salvation relationship with Jesus until after the death of Christ. If they had died, like Judas, before the cross, they would have had no salvation. Get the point? Going to church, listening to the Bible, going on missionary trips, church building trips, and whatever else they, <laughs> there may be, will not save you or get you into a relationship with Jesus. The disciples did all that, and when it came down to the wire, they all forsook him and denied him. It wasn't until after the resurrection of Christ that they began to understand how to form that special relationship, and why could they not form that special relationship before the cross? Because they were not willing to come into sympathy with Jesus and his work. They did the work, but they were not in obedience to the attitude of the work. They were too busy arguing among themselves as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. Luke 22, 24. Selfishness filled their hearts. They still had not let go of the church. There was still too much church in them and not enough Jesus. One day, the Lord took Peter, James, and John up into a mountain. Of all the disciples, these three had the closest relationship with Jesus. The sun set, and the four of them were high up where it was cold and lonely. The disciples, in their Laodicean relationship with Jesus, decided to lie down and get some rest. Eventually, their Sleep was disturbed by a brilliant light and men talking. As the disciples roused themselves from their sleepiness, it dawned on them that Jesus was talking with two men. As their minds became more alert, they recognized that heaven was open and that Elijah and Moses had come down to encourage Jesus in his work. Peter the one who could never control his mouth, blurted out, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Poor Peter, always talking and giving his opinion. How like our churches, pastors, and leaders. But God shut him up. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. 
Matthew 17, 4 and 5. Do you get the point? We need to stop listening to our pastors, churches, and denominations as they tell us that all we need is a relationship with Christ. What we need to do is shut up, be still, and listen to Him. Our churches are like Peter, always thinking how to build, talk, and make a noise and activity of our religion. They put on a very good show, great entertainment. Forget the outward, folks. Forget the entertainment and the show. Let us be quiet and listen to Jesus when he tells us to be perfect. Stop sinning and keep the Ten Commandments for our eternal life. It wasn't until they saw Jesus giving his life for them that it broke their hearts. They began to understand that to have a true relationship with God, they had to give up everything of this world in their hearts, and to be in oneness with the character and attitude of God, to live perfect, sinless, and obedient lives to the Ten Commandments, just as Jesus did. Jesus said, The Father has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to Him. See, Jesus had a relationship with His Father, by doing what pleased him. Nowhere are we commanded to please God by going to church. The disciples realized by looking at the Jews and the church they were a part of, all that church going, Sabbath keeping, all those rituals, all those ceremonies and reading of the Bible did nothing to change the heart. They walked with God, stood in church with him, stood by the lake with him, stood on the mountain with him, and were lost until they surrendered their hearts to him and accepted his life of obedience and service as their own. It was the church people who hated Jesus. He did not speak good about their church. He did not bring people to their church. In fact, he talked about destroying their church system. That is why they killed him. They had no relationship with Jesus. Their relationship was with the church. Jesus said to them, Your house, or church, is left to you desolate. Matthew 23, 38. The same today. Your church, your denomination, your pastor is left to you desolate because they refuse to teach the teachings of Jesus. On the other hand, a non-church goer who was despised and rejected by the church had a deeper relationship than even the disciples. He was obedient to Jesus. Even though he did not physically follow Jesus around or go to church, he understood what it meant to accept Jesus into his life. And when the time came, the centurion, a Roman soldier, came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, Go, and he goes. And to another, Come, and he comes. And to my servant, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. Matthew 8, 5 through 10. How sad. Not one church member had such faith. Do you see, faith was equated to obedience, doing what was commanded. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself, or have a relationship, to him. John 14, 21. I wonder if that is why Jesus gave the illustration just before his death. 
on how to have a relationship with him. He stated, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. John 14, 5 and 4. How do we abide in him or have this relationship with him? It is, is it by going to church? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. John 15, 7. You get the point. To have this relationship, we must have his words abiding in us. It isn't about going to church or listening to a pastor or reading your denominational papers. It is about sitting quietly at home, listening to Jesus and putting his words into your heart. Then if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. You are my friends if you do what I command you. John 15, 10, John 15, 14. And there it is. To become a friend of Jesus and have a salvation relationship with him, all you have to do is do what he commands you. And what does Jesus command us? To be perfect, to stop sinning, and to keep the Ten Commandments to get our eternal life. Matthew 5, 48, John 5, 14, and Matthew 19, 17. Nowhere are we commanded to go to church. We are commanded that we are not to associate with those who do not teach the teachings of Jesus. 2 John 1, 8 through 11. Those who obey Jesus will have eternal life. Those who obey their churches will have eternal death. God bless you as you live in obedience to Jesus. The more obedient you are, the closer your relationship will be with Jesus. Thank you for joining me and Jesus Christ for another video Bible study.